bring you greetings on this Good Friday as we celebrate or, or commemorate, I should say, uh, the crucifixion of our Lord uh, on the cross. Our Gospel reading for today from Mark chapter 15 beginning in verse 16. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with them they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until about three o'clock in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it for him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the centurion, excuse me, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw this, that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the word of our Lord. Good Friday has always been something of a conundrum to me. Yes, there's the time of grief and sadness, the guilt and shame of, of knowing that we might have been among those who would have called for Jesus' crucifixion. But at the same time, there's a, a feeling of, of hope that underlies all of it. It's about 50 years ago, well, right around this time of year, when I belonged to a, a church in Madison, Good Shepherd Lutheran in Madison, and, and was a member of something we called the Good Shepherd Good Time Gang. It was a group of folks at the time who, who went around and sang at different church services and, and events. And like I said, it was this time of year, it was for Good Friday, that we had a song to sing that, that I'll never forget. It was on a Friday morning when they took me from the cell, and they brought along a carpenter to hang beside as well. You can blame it on the pilot, you can blame it on the Jews, you can blame it on the devil, it's God that I accuse. It's God they ought to crucify instead of you and me. 
I said to the carpenter a hanging from the tree. I guess it just opened my eyes to seeing Good Friday in a light that I wasn't used to. But there are many perspectives, aren't there? If we think about the the initial, the the Good Friday itself, huh? There were the reactions of those who hung on either side of him, the thieves. There were the people who were down in the crowd wondering what was going to happen. There was Mary and John as they looked on, grief-stricken, I'm sure. There were the Pharisees and the scribes who were waiting, thinking, Aha! Our time has finally come. We're getting rid of this, this menace. There were those who knew better. There was Simon of Cyrene. There was Pilate who probably had mixed feelings himself because he wasn't really enamored with having Christ crucified. He kind of looked up to him. When I think of <clears throat> Good Friday, I think of funerals. And the grief that we have when we lose somebody the despair that comes, the, the thoughts of not ever being able to see them again in this life. But at the same time, it's a time of hopefulness. It's a time of faithfulness, right? Because this is the time to put to the test those promises of Jesus that said that there is more to this life than we have known, that we have experienced, and that there is more beyond this. That God is always with us, and he's got a plan, and there's something bigger and better for us in store. And so, mixed with grief and sadness, there is this time of hope. Of hope. Because, well, as Christians, we know the end of the story, don't we? We know what's coming up. We know about Easter and the, the joy that that brings. But within us, even, even before that, we have to know, we have to feel within our hearts that there is a message here that goes beyond uh, just the simple dying of a person, the simple ending of a human life. God promises us more. God promises us that our eyes will be opened and we will see eternity. That's a pretty big promise. It's hard to conceive sometimes. Especially in times like this when, when death and dying and, and sickness is, is so much around us in this coronavirus pandemic. And yet... We have hope. We see the people who reach out in love and compassion. We've seen the stories. We've heard all the prime examples of people, even children, who have reached out and given of, them very, of their very selves in order to help someone else. We think about the doctors, the nurses, the care workers of all sorts, the uh, ambulance drivers and the police officers and the firefighters and everyone, even the uh, pharmacy, uh, pharmacists and, and those who work dispensing drugs that we might be more careful, more, more comfortable in these times. Their work is a work of hope. They don't give up, and neither will we. But while we wait for that Easter to come, let us hold in our prayers those who do help keep us in comfort and those who do the best they can to see that those with the coronavirus and all the other myriads of diseases that can come and affect us, that we won't die, that our time hasn't come. May we be filled with the hope and the joy of a new tomorrow and on this day realize the grace and the commitment that Jesus Christ had not lifting up a finger in violence against anyone but living out even dying out 
his commitment that God has more for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life which you give us. We thank you for the gift that we know that there is more than just this life on earth and more than just our personal day-to-day. -day. Bless us with, with uh, grace and hope as we have faith in those who have departed from this life live in a better place. Give us grace to share that hope with others and to keep our commitment to you knowing that you have taught us to love and be committed to each other. And so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you again on Sunday morning as we celebrate the rising again and the joy which comes. For now, may your hearts be at peace. Amen.